YouTubers, Legend Adventures here with another package in the mail. Um, not haven't been bidding for much lately, uh, but something came up in my um, little advertising page that comes up on the front of eBay, and I put a pretty low bid in, and I got it. I'm actually pretty pleased with the price that I paid for this, considering how much other stuff usually goes for. So, and they actually shipped it in a nice solid box, and that was itself surrounded in. Um, uh, this is, I can see this is a trend continuing, not an Australia Post shipping method, but an actual courier bag because uh, they're probably cheaper than Australia Post nowadays and um, so I think they won the auction for $10 something, so it was like $10.50 or something like that and for that I got four boxed Coleco games um, now I'm actually going to have most of the games, but I do not have them boxed so, and the first one is Qbert and the box is in pretty decent condition there's a little bit of tearing where the flap was originally glued it's a slightly different so you get some of the um, Parker Brothers ones that are actually in a box with a lift up lid but that's in uh, pretty decent condition let's see what the cartridge is like cartridge mightn't be any better than my loose one it is clear but it's suffering from the, the glue color rot thing if we can get some focus probably because it's got so many spots on it I mean it's clear it's just got those um, you know glue marks on it and we have the manual just a little I know it's not the manual it's actually a Parker Brothers video games catalog I don't think I've ever seen this before maybe you might have seen it back in the day We've got Frogger, Super Cobra, Sky Skipper, I don't remember that one, Tutankham. Oh, I see, we've got 2600 games there as well. Reactor and Popeye. Sky Skippers must be a 2600 game, I reckon. And then you've got Qbert, Astro Chase, G.I. Joe, Cobra Strike, Strawberry Shortcake. Yeah, got a few of these others on 2600 Spider Man, Incredible Hulk, Chess, Risk. No, there's a Risk. Oh, 5200, right. And the Chess is for IBM. And you've got Empire Strikes Back, Jedi Arena, uh, Death Star Battle, and Ewok Adventure. And there's actually. A McDonald's one, look at that. Lord of the Rings Journey to Rivendell. I've never heard of that one. And um, I mean, James Bond 007. And that's listed for a few systems. Oh, and there's a chart in the back which shows which ones are available for what. But most of those screenshots were 2600. Yeah, so there's no Qbert manual in there, but I believe I may have a Qbert manual. So, depending on what my cartridge is like. Uh, I'm just trying to see whether I can see what region it's 983. Um, you can't really tell what region that one's from. Obviously, Collega doesn't care, so. But awesome. Qbert boxed. Now, next one, um, which I also have loose, is, and I actually probably have an Australian box for this one. Oh, I do indeed. But this is, um, so when the Coleco first came out in Australia, um, they came out with the cardboard boxes and later on the more um, distributed ones came out in the plastic boxes. But here we go, here's a cardboard box. So these were like direct imported ones. So we're going to have a look on the back. Yeah, so it's a, definitely a US manufactured one. I mean, these could actually be US ones, who knows? But the Coleco doesn't care. And that's a really good label, so that's definitely a very good copy of that one. Uh, no manual is a registration card. So I'm not sure about keeping variants. I mean, it is one of my favourite systems, so I shall think about it. And next one is. Carnival. 
once again, have the game loose. There's only actually one game here that I don't have, but I mean for like ten dollars. And I didn't put much of a higher bid in. I'm one of the like bid twelve dollars tops, so I didn't even reach my high bid. And that one's in pretty decent condition. And we have just the registration card. A little bit folded up. I don't believe I've got a carnival box. No, I didn't think so. So that'll um definitely you know, adding to the box part of the collection and next we have uh, a ladybug and that's definitely a US box I'm pretty sure we didn't get any games with uh, pictures of arcade cabinets on it and that's generally how the US covers are going now this time we do what have we got oh we've got a general Coleco catalogue we'll have a look at that in a sec Registration card. The cartridge has gone all the way down the bottom of the box. Um, not too bad. A little bit of um, moisture on. Yeah, so just registration card, no manual. But we do have a little Coleco catalogue, and oh wow, it's got all the um, all the handhelds in it. I would love to be able to pick up some of these, at least some, especially some of those. And you just don't see them around here very often. Um, my actual you know, younger cousin, I share a birthday with him, he has a, actually does a little bit of scouting around some of the, um, uh, most of our stuff shows up in our tip stores, where he takes up into our, our, gar our garbage tips and um, you can drop stuff off that you consider might be okay for recycling at the, um, at the tip shop and then they'll resell it to somebody else and the prices aren't too bad but that's about the only place where you find stuff um, anyway, ladybug and the last one which I definitely didn't have and it's in very good condition this one's probably worth the most out of the lot of them it is a Spectre Video Frantic Freddy but obviously for the Colega Vision. I have the Spectre Video version as well for the Spectre Video. Very nice shiny box. So that's my very first boxed Spectre Video type for the Coleco. Um, I believe I've got a loose cross force. Um, it works but it doesn't work. It has a little bit of graphics corruption no matter what I do. Now the cartridge isn't too bad, the, um, usually the screw holes are poked out in these because obviously it's easy to press down, it's so shiny, is it going to focus? But that's not too bad and it's got its top label uh, ooh, Might be something in here Not sure it's a manual though Okay, yeah, we've got a Spectre Video registration card and the tray is fully intact as well Nice good tray actually, it's, um, it holds the box really well. Alright, so not a bad pickup for 10 bucks, and, um, and even the postage was quite reasonable because they used one of those um, freight bags. So, uh, very pleased with that, they'll be definitely getting positive uh, feedback on eBay from me. Um, Alright, now I mean I do have most of the uh, other games, but some of them I haven't played for a while, so let's go give some of those games a go. Here we go with Frantic Freddy. It'll be interesting to see how this compares to the Spectre Video version. I'm sure it's going to be identical. Let's play it on uh, number one. Okay, a bit of intro music, nice and colourful. So we're basically this dude, who looks a bit like a spider, but is actually a fireman. Oops, oh God, that was close. So you basically have to shoot the flames, and you can shoot the things coming down, as you can see. And this is the first section of the game. So 
So this is uh, this Freddy, Freddy title is actually one of the launch cartridge titles for the Spec Video computers, and um, you know, um, and they work too bad considering. Now we have uh, a more platform type section where we can shoot sideways. And you can't shoot the purple ones until so I'm shooting and nothing much is going to happen until you've gotten rid of all the red ones. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to die there. Um, so you need to uh, shoot the red ones but give yourself enough time and distance to get away from the purple ones. of whether you're killing the purple ones, they just disappear. I suppose you should count how many times you hit them. And then you go around and play the first level. Now obviously we're only playing on the entry level difficulty, so I can't tell you whether things get on the high difficulty whether it introduces any new creatures, but that's as far as I know and from my memory. That's it. So it's an interesting little game, um, quite colourful. Um, and with nice music, so yeah, not too bad. Let's try the next one. We go with Smurf Rescue. I'm not going to do level one because uh, the game's strange enough as it is, but making it too easy. Now, it's an interesting little kids' game. Um, one thing they did though, which is really annoying, if you have, is you have to press up to jump. So, no buttons, and you have to judge these silly jumps. Almost exactly. Whoops. Oh. Now, you've got higher jumps, and you have to do a double jump. And the second one, obviously, you need to press at an angle. First one, you need to press straight up. And anything with a sc score next to it is a hazard. And you can duck, as you can say. Like I said, I didn't go with the easy level, because it's quite frankly too easy. I wouldn't be showing you much of the game. So basically we've got to get to Gargamel's castle, dodging all the bats and spiky things. Um, but it's just amazing that they made that one little decision to make the controls um, that control mistake. I mean it's quite colourful otherwise. Whoops. I mean it definitely looks like a smurf. Ten screens to get to the castle and rescue Smurfette. You can see, like this game's already making my hand ache. So we're in the castle now. We have a spider to get past. So it uses a lot of repeated graphics. Now here's the dreaded double jump. Which if you do too close, you die. <laughs> oh, that was lucky. I didn't actually mean to go for it. But there we go, I've rescued Smurfhead. So all is good in the world. Right, let's try the next game. Right, next we have Sega's Carnival. Um, I actually really like this game. Always did. Used to play it all the time in the store. Um, I think I had my own copy at one stage. It's one of the better home versions. So you basically have a gun, you shoot the things, uh, you need to 
take mind of the ducks because if you miss those they come down and you hit the yellow box you get what, whatever's in it you have a limited number of bullets and if you spell the words bonus you get whatever the bonus is over there. So, let's we'll 380. Whoops, oh, missed. Now, I'll just let a duck go for a second. Now, if I let him go completely, he would come down and eat some of my bullets. Now, if I hit the yellow box now, I'd lose 400 points. So, we don't want to see that. Right, and you notice I just hit one of the things at the top there. You also need to get rid of those as well. few extra bullets. Which I'm going to need because I'm not doing particularly well. Oh, oh, how did that miss? Right, got all those. Get two extra ten bullets. And a couple of bullets up the top there. Get rid of these ones. Extra five bullets there. I'm not sure what specifically ends a level. I think there's a counter of the number of items that come out. And then you get a bonus for the bullets you have left. And it gets harder. Um, and then the challenge stage, which is always fun. So what you do is you wait for the bear to come along. Him, he growls and he goes back and he starts getting a bit faster. Oops. Ah, messed it up because I hit him too soon the other way. Um, and you get the bonus for how many times you can make him go back and forth. And the game gets a little harder. It's a great little game that you can play for quite a period of time and have a lot of fun with. So, really good title. Let's try the next one. Now we have Ladybug, um, another one of the launch titles for the Coleco, and you know, really, its answer to Pac-Man. I mean, there was a Ladybug game in the arcade that took Pac-Man to that next level. Uh, I'm just dumb at an R about whether to play level one or two. Better play level one. I haven't played it for such a long time. Uh, so cucumber. Now, like Pac-Man, we have to get all the white things in the maze. Um, so if we catch the blue, so that how the things are different colours. Um, now every time the um, I'm going to change the T, right? So I've got a yellow T, so it goes in extra. Now every time the barrier goes, all the line goes all the way around the outside, one of the bugs come out. But you can also change the maze, like I just did there. I don't need an eye, a yellow eye. I don't need a blue. Better get these ones in the middle. Whoa. Oh. I'm too busy trying to point grab rather than get on with the job. Because, let's face it, Pac Man can get a little boring with only a single maze that doesn't change after a while. Same side. I'm not sure, I don't think you can touch the skull, so I can't remember. I haven't played the game for such a long time. And I can definitely see you. Oh, yeah, if you lead them into the skulls, it makes them disappear. That's good. So they only stay the red very short period of time. So XP and A. Alright, so it's a bit faster now. Okay, let's go get all of these. So we get our multiply. The A. Oh, it's too slow, was it? But as you can see, it's um, 
I'll just see what happens when I just go. Yeah, I die. Yeah. Um, so it's a uh, you know not a bad little maze game that's got a lot to it, and as you can see, even the creatures you're up against have changed in the centre of the maze as well. So, um, and uh, you know the speed of how they're coming out has changed as well. Just making that little bit. Well, actually, I won't make it back at there in time, and I don't need a P for red, so you've got to be right next to it when it changes red. yourself away in the maze like that and I missed it again let's finish one more level or die and then we'll move on and I think it's gonna be the dying all right let's try the next game okay and our last game is Qbert now this is one of my absolute favorite games on the system it's one of the best ver home versions of the arcade game all the cutscenes, it's nice and colourful. And sound effects that closely resemble the arcade. And because I like it so much, I've played it a bit. So I'm not too bad at it as well. So the object of Qbert is to jump on all the squares. Um, now in this particular stage, you only jump on them once. You can see up on the top left hand corner it's telling us what we need that we need to change them all to yellow uh, the purple ball when it comes down will change into the spring guy which if you leave it you can't jump on the disc too early will blind him and he'll jump off the edge and that gets you an extra bonus you also get a bonus for the ones that you have left um, and you play four levels of the same type of gameplay so at the moment we only have to jump on the squares once and jumping on them again doesn't do anything um, but next we'll need to jump on the squares twice I'll just get up to that level it shouldn't take too long um, and obviously we've had one level and we've still just got standard balls and the spring guy coming after us but as you go further, you get more and more things added to the game. Okay, so round three. We have some new creatures that hang around down the bottom. Oops, these guys are a nuisance because it's hard to judge which square they're on. And thus can easily get yourself in trouble. You can jump over them. This plays quite comfortably with the controller. You don't have to press diagonally, you actually press um, in the direction. So some people like to align their joystick. So this is the last round of this level. top. Safe on the top square for things coming in but not the surrounding ones so something could be coming down. Oh, and that was a time freeze, the green thing, another new piece coming in. So level two that shows us what we have to do. Right, we need to jump on every square twice and jumping on it again doesn't change it. So coming down here, blue is not what we want, we want yellow. So we need to jump on them all twice. And the next level after this, we can um, only jump on them once. We jump on them again and they'll change back a colour. So that becomes a bit difficult. Um, also, on, even on this level, we'll get a new creature, which is this guy, who goes and changes the maze back. Oops, and there we go. Good old Qbert Square as I die. Um, yeah, one of my favourite games on the Coleco and one of the original ones on the system. So, an excellent lot of games. Um, yes, I only did not have one of them 
Um, but Coleco is really one of my favourite systems, so the opportunity to get, um, you know, what is it, five boxed games in the collection uh, for ten dollars could not be missed. All right. Thank you to all my subscribers. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all later.